Oh yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Juliet Ballard. Present from Dexter, Michigan. Hi, Julia. <laughs> and Marta Larson, I don't see her. Okay, Marie Gress. Present calling in from Milan, Michigan. Okay, and Margie Reynolds. Present and calling in from Hitsfield Township. And Elizabeth Thompson, I don't see her either. Jennifer Green. Present, calling in from City of Ypsilanti. And uh, Brenda McKinney. Uh, present, um, calling in from Superior Township. Jasmine Cooper. Present, calling from Ann Arbor. Allison Foreman. Present, calling in from Toledo, Ohio. And Annie Somerville. Present, calling in from the city of Ypsilanti. Great, and you have a quorum. Excellent. Up next is public participation. If members of the public would like to speak, please raise your hand. Um, Stephanie, Ipsy Senior Centers, I'm assuming it's Monica, if you could promote yep. her. And then I see Gary next and Barbara after that. Got them. I'll promote, promote them all to panelists. All right, and then Moonson just raised his hand too. Yep, got it. Just take a second for them to switch over. Mm -hmm. uh, Monica, you were first. Oh, she hasn't moved up yet. There you go. She's on the screen. Okay, great. Okay, am I up? Yep. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I'm Monica Prince. I am uh, live in Ipsy Township and I um, am the director at the Ipsy Senior Center. And um, I wanted to say that I'm very hopeful that the millage is going to pass. Um, I'm not so hopeful about how the money is going to be spent. Um, from what I have seen, a the majority of the money is planning to be added to the uh, bureaucracy of the county government. Um, I'm hoping that after the millage ballot goes through, that there is more uh, participation, maybe a panel of people from different agencies that have been involved in senior services for years. And I'd say uh, the agencies that should be touched besides the Commission on Aging, but also the Washtenaw Health Aging Collaborative, the Say Yes to Seniors, the way and Age Ways that these are all organizations that have worked in the field for years. And I think they would be a good perspective of how this money is gonna actually get to the services of, of the older, older population. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, then Barbara. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope that you uh, were moderate in your consumption of Halloween bounty last night. I know that in the past, it was the shopping bag sort of uh, kind of a measurement of how much candy I could collect. Uh, so I hope you are feeling all right this morning. I just want to take a moment to uh, say uh, how fantastic it is to see the Commission on Aging in full operation and full swing. Um, you know, the Board of Commissioners and panel of the Commission on Aging as a way to advise them or inform them about issues related to senior matters in Washtenaw County. And I've got to say what we're seeing now is really that becoming a reality as you take, uh, take, up, take the reins on helping to promote issues related to seniors in the county. There's no doubt that uh, we have gotten to this point with the senior millage, as I've mentioned before, 
through the collaboration of several different groups and peoples. Uh, you know, the Board of Commissioners, the County Administrators, obviously the COA, and funders like uh, Area Agency on Aging and Ageways that have all been involved in coming together in a collaborative spirit to make this issue, raise up this issue, and make sure that the people of Washtenaw County are aware of what's going on and offer them some opportunities about what might be a possible resolution. I think with that in mind, we have to realize that this is a transformational opportunity for seniors in Washtenaw County. And as Monica's pointed out, and in this spirit of collaboration, there is a wealth of information, expertise, and understanding of the aging network in Washtenaw County. And I think in that spirit of collaboration, we need to find a way to be able to listen to those viewpoints, incorporate them, and help us build the strongest possible outcome that we can achieve. So that's what I'm talking about this morning. It's something that we've seen all along is this collaborative spirit. I wanna see that continue. I wanna see, there should be, no, this is not a political issue. This is a very sensitive issue about the well being of our friends and neighbors. And in that respect, we all deserve to listen to those who have had such an immense part in providing services up until now. So thanks very much. Uh, congratulations to the COA. Uh, I look forward to a lot of really great things from the COA, and I know you won't let me down. So thank you. Thank you, Gary. Barbara, then Moonson. Barbara, are you there? We'll come back to her. I'm oh, here. Wait. Oh, there sorry. you are. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you all this morning on this first day of November. Um, just wanted to um, share a little bit about um, my you know, kind of ringing back on what the other folks were saying about um, while it's looking maybe good for the millage, um, the same concerns I have on how funds will be spent and um, the impact that it will make. And I encourage us to take a look at things like ROI. You know, when you contract with a program that's already doing the work and getting things done, what does it look like um, versus um, moving the service or changing how it's delivered or, or something like that. So, and also just here to listen at what's going on. So thank you very much. And I appreciate you all. Thank you. Moonson? Uh, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. Uh, just a couple of side comments really quick. Uh, Marie, you're not in your costume anymore. Um, and I find that very disappointing. Gary, I see a bass guitar in the background. Uh, props, I'm also a former uh, punk rock bass player. That was a long time ago. Um, more seriously, though, uh, you know, I want to follow up on just some, some of the things that Monica mentioned uh, in regards to the passing of the senior millage and the currently known draft plan, draft plan that Washington County Administration has put forth. Uh, please also take my comments in the context that I have obviously certain biases. I am the human services supervisor at OCD and the foster grandparent program and the senior nutrition program are within my wheelhouse. Um, so when I see the draft plan, one of my initial concerns is um, a duplication of effort uh, of creating a new Department of Aging. Um, and perhaps the county could look at, are there current departments within the county that are connected to that work? Uh, one, a couple that comes to mind really quickly is, is public health and of course, Office of Community and Economic Development. Uh, through OCAD, we have connections obviously through senior nutrition, foster grandparents. And then there's also the focus with um, new human services partnership. Uh, so this is the department that already has kind of like the connections, the relationships, um, and has the infrastructure too. Because if we're talking about a new Department of Aging, we are also talking about a replication of kind of like the finance and operations that every county department has to have, some type of finance manager, an accountant, the administrative assistants that help, who work in the background and who push that um, actual service work forward. Um, so 
I think that would be one possible reduction in sort of like county staff is, is like go to existing departments where, where they already have the infrastructure. The other thing is, is that if there is concern about like, we really need a director who um, can has the authority, the agency who can kind of like leverage the relationships with um, funders in particular age ways, AAA, 1B. Um, that could e easily be kind of like Jimena Lovelock or it could be Tony Community, uh, just to say. And then the last thing I wanna say, just as far as duplication of efforts, we're also talking, talking about duplication of services within the community. Um, you know, I, I believe in the draft document, there was um, a um, senior minor repair program, uh, which I, I know that uh, Catholic Social Services of Washington County has a, a very similar program. And, and in addition, within um, Washington County, OCD has a weatherization and repair program too. Um, as far as the three positions and supervisors uh, that deal with um, resource um, eligibility determination and case management, uh, I do believe that Ageways already provides uh, funding to various agencies to do resource advocacy, which is the same type of work um, and is being successfully done at JFS, Catholic Social Services, et cetera. Um, I think that if the county can look beyond just trying to look, look beyond just itself and work with um, our really good community partners um, and consider not having such bureaucracy within the county, this would free up a, probably millions of dollars uh, that, that could go to an RFP process instead, uh, maybe raise that $3.6 million to at least double. Thank you all. Those are my thoughts. Have a good one. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> moving on to um, commission response to the public. Oh, I guess before we do that, any other members of the public want to raise their hand and also share? Okay, great. So moving on to the commission response to public participation, please raise your hand. Annie, I see you first. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, I apologize for not having my camera on. Um, I am recovering from pretty bad sciatic nerve pain. And so um, sitting and everything is pretty uncomfortable for me right now. So um, I appreciate all the comments we got um, from Monica, uh, Gary, and, and, and Barbara, um, and Moon. Thank you for that. Um, I share similar concerns. Um, my main priority is making sure we're putting pushing more money out for services and not duplicating efforts. Um, I think that after, um, hopefully after the millage passes, the, the board of commissioners is gonna have a lot of work to do um, and a lot of listening to do to people who are experts in this uh, field. Um, and I'm going to continue to, um, you know, try to, my, the, the best way I can be helpful is to try to find a coalition of five of us to be on the same page, because I think it's going to be really hard to get all nine of us on the same page, although I will try. Um, but my number one priority, whether it's for this millage or any other service, um, is always trying to get more money directly out to help people um, and not duplicating efforts. So uh, appreciate all the feedback, um, appreciate the insight from um, our staff who um, do some of this work. And um, I'm hopeful that my colleagues will hear this and that we can make sure that we're helping the most people. Thank you. Brenda? Yes, I just have a comment to make. Um, there's a lot of discussion about duplication of services for seniors. Uh, it's just a thought, maybe we might want to think about forming a committee or Annie, maybe the county might want to do that just to sit down and see what services are being duplicated. So just a thought. And uh, if someone wants to do that, I'll be happy to uh, participate with that project. Thank you. Allison? Yeah, so Brenda, to kind of pay you back on that, um, our the subcommittee of the future facing uh, millage group, when we met um, a couple of weeks ago, this was top uh, priority for us. And this was something we wanted to address. So all the comments made by the public 
were things we were talking about just a few weeks ago. And one of the things our group is bringing for consideration as a resolution is um, essentially a work group post um, election. If you know, we are hopeful that it, it will pass on Tuesday that we have a runway moving forward that um, maybe we could get a work group together and really discuss this, have a lot of different people on that. So um, that will be discussed later. Hopefully I, I have the draft of it too, so I can share it with everybody and put it up on screen when we're at that point. Okay, if you need some help, I'll be more than happy to participate. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you. Anyone else wanna make response back to public comment. Wonderful. Thank you all for making public comment. Oh, Marta. Yeah, go ahead. Um, first of all, I just want to make sure I'm recorded as being present. I was a few minutes late. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, <clears throat> I think in response to the concerns about duplication of effort and um, um, spending money on administration as opposed to services, I'm in support of having a central point, one single point in the county where seniors who need services can go to be directed to where it is they need to receive the resources they need. Um, and I don't see any way to do that without having a particularly identified person or office, preferably just a person who can, you know, be the person on the other end of the phone. When I was, um, and when I've been out speaking to seniors about the work of the Commission on Aging, they're, you know, one of the things that comes up over and over again is we just want to find a place where we can call to find out what we need to know. Having a website is not helpful because many of us aren't on web on the web, um, and they just want to talk to somebody. And so, because mm -hmm. we have all these diverse services available in the county, um, either within county government or throughout the county and nonprofits. It's very hard to figure out where to go. And that's what I'm in favor of is having one central point where people can call and find the services they need, not to necessarily supply all those services at, at that specific point, but to look around um, and, and let people know where they can receive those resources. So that's what I have in mind. And I'm also willing to serve on the planning committee if that turns out to be a possibility. Thank you, Dina. Hi, I wanted to just kind of piggyback on what you said, Marta. So I, I think one of the um, areas where it's really critical to have this planning committee is that we have, um, we have some of those pieces already in place, but I, I don't wanna say that they are in place fully, but you know, we've got two on one and we have, um, uh, age ways is um, information and resource number. So these are these are not meeting the needs fully. Like let's, I just want to be, make that clear that I'm not saying that that they're already you know existing. But I think the um, the role of the, that planning committee can really then look at you know look at those those resources and say, do we do we need to just beef up those resources in a way that gets to what you're describing, Marta? Because I agree, I think that it's so important that we have a um, a system that is very easy to navigate for our seniors. Um, and we may find that that those systems aren't just not able to beat the need, you know, in their current structure. But I, I think that that's one of the real purposes of having this planning committee is not to just not create a, a, a third or a fourth or fifth system um, because that will not uh, address that problem. I also would love to be part of that planning committee. Thank you, Annie. Yeah, I just wanted to um, respond to, uh, to Marta. Um, and Deanna's comments. I, um, I, I think that it across the board, um, there is a desire from the commissioners to have like some sort of entry point system within the county, and and perhaps that is just like a staff person within an already existing department, and not like a you know a totally brand new department. I was thinking about that when we were getting the presentation. Um, like, well, this could live within OCED. Um, 
And so I, 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 but I do think that there is a, and, and I kind of share that, like, I want there to be some sort of like point person on staff at the County that can kind of be the, the umbrella for all of this. Um, and I just, you know, it could look differently depending on how we decide to go. So I just wanted to say, I appreciate that feedback and comment. Thank you. Anyone else response to the public? All right. Thank you, public, for um, for sharing. Um, Monica, Gary, Moon, and Barbara, uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Stephanie, if you can move the public back into attendees um, and then promote Andrew, we're going to get to him in just a moment. Um, while Stephanie's doing that, can we have an approval of the minutes from October 4th? Margie and Allison. Any discussion? Great. Stephanie, could you do the roll call for us? Yeah. And then I'll get back to moving people <laughs> after that. <laughs> um, there's quite a few. Uh, let's see. Juliet Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Oh, Marie. Yes. Oh, got it. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Got it. Jennifer Green. Yes. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Yes. Allison Foreman? Yes. And Annie Somerville? Yes. Okay. The motion passes. Wonderful. Well, everyone, after our October meeting, um, we, well, at the end of our October meeting, I guess I should say, we had some discussion about um, Deputy Administrator Andrew Deleu's presentation to the Board of Commissioners working session on what a Department of Aging Services could look like and what how the millage dollars, if passed, could potentially be spent. Um, it was a first draft. It was a first hey, this is an idea um, that he presented. And then we discussed that at our last meeting. I had two pages of notes from our meeting, from experts in the county that I've been talking to, some of my own thoughts. Um, and I got to meet with Andrew a couple of weeks ago. I shared um, the initial questions, comments, concerns that we had. Um, and then I invited him to come and speak to um, this group uh, today. So without further ado, um, he's not, he's not a panelist yet. So we just, I guess we waited for him to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Um, so with that, Andrew, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Marie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very nice to be with you here today. Uh, I'm Andrew DeLille. I'm the Deputy County Administrator for the County. Um, Marie, I really appreciate the introduction. I, I did have a chance to hear public comment, and I've heard many similar comments along the way, uh, and so I'm looking forward to being able to speak with you all this morning in terms of where we are and I think where the county expects to go with this. Um, and you know why we're taking this up right now. I would certainly, uh, I, I've tried to modify uh, what I've talked about previously based on the, the feedback from Marie, you know, and some of the questions. And, and so I'm, I'm hoping that I can anticipate some of those, uh, but I would certainly welcome questions along the way um, as I move through my, my presentation this morning. Um, I'll, I'll try and move through it pretty quickly uh, so that there can be time for more discussion. But a, a few big points. I, I do really just want to emphasize that this is a first draft. Uh, nothing's been finalized. Uh, we're, we, pre we prepared this first draft um, in really in trying to be in alignment with other direction that we received from the board earlier this year regarding transparency in the planning and reporting of how millage funds are being used. And so uh, given uh, how, how quick, well, maybe it doesn't seem quickly to this group, but from the vote uh, this past summer by the board to put the millage question on the ballot to the first possible collection would be inside of five months. And so wanted to have some groundwork ready that, that could be implemented or that could at least be considered so that we're not in a 
a, a good problem, but a problem nonetheless of sitting on you know eleven and a half million dollars that could be collected with the December tax bills, um, and, and so are looking to move that ahead. Uh, really, uh, personally, want to uh, show support and agreement with the need to to do more planning here and to talk more and engage more people in this discussion. So ha happy to be here today and and to have the invite, but uh, certainly would be open and and welcome to other other people you think might need to influence this or, or to coming back in the future uh, and to continuing to talk with you all in your role uh, as an advisory body to the Board of Commissioners. Um, so with that, I'm going to share my screen here. If you'll give me one second. So yeah, can I get some head nods maybe that that's working? Lovely, thank you. Um, so without further ado here, um, I, I also just say, I, I've tried to notate the slides um, where things are different, you know, to make it easy uh, to call out. Um, but again, please stop me along the way. Assuming that that's the practice, I'll defer to the, you know, the chair on that one if there's a different way that you normally handle I'll watch stuff. for I'll hands practice. going up. Thank you. Um, so the, the contents is, is generally the same. Um, wanna, you know, the ballot language is really important to us. Uh, the county has uh, seven millages that have been put before the voters this year. Uh, and, and always with millages, the guiding, the guiding principle is what, what do we need to do to be in compliance with what the voters have allowed? So we'll spend some time going over that. Um, there's been lots of questions about, you know, what this thing has been missed or, or did you look at this thing and putting this together? So I, I do have a very brief summary of, of the things that I have looked at. Please don't consider me an expert in senior services or in uh, all of these things, but really have tried to build upon the great work that you all have done, that the Community Foundation has done, uh, that AAA1B Ageways has done, and some of the other reports that are out there. I, I wouldn't call it perfect, but, but have tried to do our homework. Um, in terms of the complementary stuff there, I, I do think what the county brings to it and what county administration is really responsible for uh, is, is working with the board to implement all of these different things and, and making sure that the structure of the county is organized in such a way to deliver services and to make sure that public dollars that come through the county are being spent in according with all of the different requirements that, we're, uh, that, we're, that we need to follow. Um, most of my time will be spent on the actual proposal itself. The new thing here is talking about the design. Um, and this really did come out of my, my discussion with Marie and some others, but, but talking about you know, what's, what's been settled, uh, which is really nothing other than the millage language at this point, and what's still to be determined and, and the, the process by which this proposal has come together. And I, I hope that might answer some of the, the concerns I've heard about duplication and who's doing what and what's the best way to deliver services. Um, and at least in a little bit speaking more into you know how how this proposal reflects some of those different decisions in the future. Um, and then have some next steps. You know the biggest one will be you know what happens after uh, ballots start to get counted next week. Um, and then again, really looking forward to the questions and discussion. Um, and please uh, you know scoot me along if I'm getting to be too long winded here too. I can probably go on with this stuff for a while. but uh, so ballot language, I think you're all pretty familiar for uh, or familiar with. Uh, this was approved this past summer, very broad in terms of the purpose of the use. Uh, you know, older person services millage uh, to provide funding for activities and services for older persons age 60 and older in the county. So very, very broad compared to some of the other language that we've got. Um, additionally, with some of the other millages that we have, there's additional county policy or ordinance that further restricts that. And there, there's really none of that here. Uh, and so it's quite a... a you know, a broad potential in terms of how these funds could be used to address that goal. Um, again, half a mil, uh, eight year levy, it'd be about 11.5 million in the first year. And again, if approved uh, with the, the count coming up, that would start to be collected on December tax bills and would go out, you know, with the, the winter tax bills. And so money would start coming in as soon as January. Um, and that is a figure uh, in what we've seen this with other millages in the county that does tend to go up over time, be, being tied to property taxes and the growth of property values inside of the county growing incrementally. Um, that, that's a number that, you know, while it might get chipped away due to some of the, the tax complications on the back end would likely increase over the course of the eight year uh, duration. Um, so the references, I'll just run through these really quick, but this has been a lot of discussion at the Board of Commissioners in working session and reports, reports from the Commission on Aging uh, that have happened over the past, you know, five, six, seven years or so. Um, lots of other uh, publicly available reports, many of them very helpfully collected on, on your website, you know, but, but lots of great resources out there uh, to, to build upon in terms of what are the priorities, what are the programs, what are the, the big needs uh, that are facing the population age 60 and older. Um, 
looking at other operating models. Uh, I think it's come from this group, but Washtenaw County is one of there's a hand, handful of counties inside of the state without a senior millage program. And so there's quite a bit that can be done there in terms of how other counties that also have senior millages uh, operate their services. Um, I, I, you know, just in that analysis, the, the question that's before the voters of the county is um, would raise quite a bit more money than is typically levied by other counties inside of the state. And I think with that, there's really potential to do some transformative work, to do some really big um, impactful, impactful programs with this, uh, and, and want to get into you know the how we how this proposal represents the different things that could be achieved for that. Um, and then uh, uh, on, in terms of the details, and this goes back to the discussion at the board table uh, late this past spring, but there was some pretty detailed uh, planning work that was developed at that time uh, by a former commission on aging liaison uh, Jason Majewski. Um, and, and that was pretty influential in terms of some of the specific programmatic elements in here as well. Uh, so this is an updated slide. Uh, and just to reflect, um, since that board meeting, uh, which was about five or six weeks ago or at this point, um, I ha have had the ability to do additional discussion with other county department heads. Um, I did not have the chance to do that before speaking uh, at the board table, uh, but but have had some pretty helpful discussions in terms of how existing county services could be utilized here. Um, it wasn't the first time, uh, actually Moon and his team and his department, uh, I, I did work with them before going to the board of commissioners in terms of this, some of the specific things that are that are in there related to um, programs at OCD, but, but have a, had, had a chance to build upon that. And I think still a lot more work to be done there. Um, wouldn't call it exhaustive by any means. And then, you know, again, had the chance to talk with Marie for a couple hours or maybe an hour uh, a couple of weeks ago. But um, so that, that was helpful and, and you know, are, are looking forward to getting more of that feedback um, as, as we continue to develop this. Uh, so to the proposal itself. Um, this is not a new slide, but really what, what we were trying to do from county administration with putting this before the Board of Commissioners is to give them give them some, some concrete thing to start looking at, right, and saying, is this the right thing? How is it right? How is it wrong? What, how does it need to be different uh, to hopefully advance the discussion about the use of these millage funds? Uh, but, but really uh, wanted to comply with the millage language. Uh, want to be effective and efficient with service delivery, and, and so I'll hit on that point again later, but um, there's no desire from our part uh, to duplicate things that are already working well elsewhere, um, but do want to try and think about things that could either be done more effectively or, or where there's a justification for doing something new and different. Um, and I think just to Marta's comment about the need for some specialization here, that, that's how I would frame a lot of this stuff, right, is that this is new and this is big, um, and that one of the, the challenges with bureaucracy is navigating it. And so having the clarity around leadership and having the clarity around responsibility for programming um, in some ways, I think, can, can justify why, why these new structures look to be set up. I do have some additional details here, too, as well as, you know, the breakdowns of the cost and the money and where all that stuff's going that that might. Um, well, I guess my hope would be that they maybe lessen the worry a little bit about the, the cost of some of that stuff. And I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, do you want to do something that aligns with county priorities and practices? Uh, a specific area here would be the county's um, equity policy. And, and I know there are questions around how does how does the use of equity uh, apply to, to senior services in particular and, and inside of the county? And what does it mean? But the, the county does have an equity policy. And, and I would say uh, to start with, it means that the same solution isn't going to work all over the place, right? And so you need to be somewhat granular with understanding different community needs and different community resources and how county resources or programs can be used to complement uh, complement existing services and fill those needs. And I, I think certainly that would apply to the, uh, the, the wide range of senior services that we've got inside of the county, right? Manchester uh, and their population, which I, I know pretty well because I live just north of Manchester, but they're, they're different from Monica and, and what's going on in Ipsy, or they're different from what's going on in Dexter. And so trying to be more fine grained with the approach and, and not just have a one size fits all thing and, and really trying to recognize, you know, again, how those resources can be complementary and address the specific needs of, of the various communities that could be served here. I uh, want to you know, again recognize that this is not starting from scratch, uh, and and so you know a lot of great work done already, and so don't want to recreate work or, or miss any work, and would be grateful for references that I might have missed. 
Um, want to be uh, engaged and transparent and planful with all this stuff and be pretty upfront with how we've reached our decisions, where there, where there's assumptions being used, what's been done, what hasn't been done, who's got decision-making responsibilities in the future. Um, and then uh, another big one here, and this goes back to that board uh, board resolution from earlier this year, but, but for the public, you know, beyond maybe those like you who are very closely involved in this work or beyond the service providers who are directly serving this population, that we're accountable to the, the, the public of the county who will be providing their tax funds to help support this work, you know, and that they've got interest here as well. And so that a lot of that is where the reporting and the planning and the um, a lot of the, the, the need to communicate back to the public comes from. Is this a good pace so far in terms of level of detail? Any feedback? Okay. I think it's great. Anyone have questions, comments at this point? Okay, I'll just keep plugging away. Yeah. Um, so this this is a new slide here, uh, and I think you know trying trying to speak to uh, like how this was built, right? And and I and I with my with my presentation, the board of commissioners really tried to emphasize this, but didn't have a specific slide on it. Um, but the county for four years or so now has been in the process of going through a program-based budgeting process. Um, and just a little bit of context here, but with, with that, you know, we have been trying to be more intentional in terms of thinking about the outcomes that we can get for our community through various county programs. And we, we've got some stuff that we do because we want to do it. We have a lot of things that we do because we're required to do it. And we have a whole lot of things that we do because someone else pays us to do it. And when they pay us to do it, we're then obligated to do those services. Um, but where we can, and I think where the, where the board has a lot of um, uh, say over the eventual use of funds, we've been trying to be more thoughtful about moving from just we spend this amount of money on this county department towards, you know, what does that expenditure of funds get us for the community at the end of it? Um, you know, maybe an easy example there would be if the county had a tree planting program. We don't, but, you know, trees are a little bit easier than some of the services to think about. You know, thinking about if it cost us $10,000 to plant 10,000 trees, you know, that's that's a good understanding of what you get out at the end of it. And you, you get those 10,000 trees rather than the $10,000 going to support part of a, a staff person. So I think with that and, and why I'm spending so much time on that is I, I hope that you see through this program that, um, want to be goal oriented first and then think about how the different programs can support those goals. I will say the Commission on Aging, I, you know, with your role as an advisory group to the Board of Commissioners, I think is a really key group to help say what those goals should be. Um, I have tried, uh, and I, I don't have a slide on this here because I, you know, but I think it's probably a necessary discussion to have is really, you know, what are, what are those goals for the millage funds and, and what should be the focus of, of these resources, right? I think we can do a lot of things with this. Uh, there can be a lot of, you know, positive things for the community that can be achieved with the millage fund, but we probably can't do everything uh, despite having $11.5 million. And so really trying to be focused up front about, is this, is there gonna be a focus on health? Is there gonna be a focus on transportation? Is it any certain parts of the population? And so that, that's not yet been done, but I think again, you know, a lot of discussion is, is likely needed there, both with this group and the board of commissioners. From there, though, really thinking about the programs or projects that can help support those goals. Uh, and, and so most of this proposal is built around a program framework. Um, so there is the resource hub in here, the resource hub designed as a program. What I, what I hope um, you all can understand in terms of some of the flexibility is like there's been no staffing uh, created at this point. And I think there's a big discussion to be had in terms of what's the most efficient way to deliver that program. So I, I'm hoping that we can talk uh, and get to some sort of agreement that, yeah, we got to have this, this type of service delivered, right? And that once there's agreement that these are the different services that need to be offered, there can be a separate discussion around what's the, the most efficient and effective way to deliver those services. And that those are somewhat related questions, but are, are also independent to some degree. And I think that that's where a lot of the questions about duplication comes in. And to be candid, um, you know, there's there's been some preliminary analysis in here, and it has been built upon service levels uh, and, you know, some some good benchmarks from other programs with what it takes to do like home improvement or what it takes to staff a call center. And so I feel pretty good about uh, what it would cost the county to do that. But but where that what, what hasn't been yet, done yet is maybe comparing that to the existing resources at Catholic Social Services or comparing it to some of these other models that are out there. And I think that would also need to be a necessary step before this gets set up. 
So I'll just really emphasize that point again, you know, want to start by thinking about the goals and then how those programs or projects can support those goals. And then, you know, thinking about the best way to deliver and to structure those programs and projects at that point, talking about, you know, like, how do you, how do you make sure we're not wasting money? How do you make sure you're not duplicating services? How do you make sure that if things are more expensive, there's some sort of justification for what you get out of that additional expenditure? Uh, points four and five here. Um, are some things that are required for the county as a government uh, and out, you know things that are expected, I think, by our board and, and our public with regarding the use of uh, expenditures of public funds. You know, but but the leading and monitoring and reporting on that progress, I'll, I'll probably continue to weave that that type of thinking through my comments. But you know, we we have things that we need to do as a government and in the county, I mean, the, the millage is structured so that the funds come to the county and that in turn, the county board of commissioners are going to be responsible for the allocation of these funds. And whether that's through RFPs, through contracts to outside groups or expenditures in-house, but with all of that stuff need to be able to report and track and be able to monitor that to make sure that we're in compliance with all the different things that we need to do as a government. Um, and then number five is, you know, just expecting that stuff is going to change in the future, right? Uh, stuff will probably change in terms of the decisions made by uh, different providers inside of the county, decisions made by the federal or state governments, uh, changes that come from how the population inside of the county changes, right? And so we don't want to lock ourselves into anything, um, but rather want to put in place a structure that is able to uh, be adaptive and, and to be proactive over time. To, to keep you know meeting the needs of the the public as best we can with it. So um, again, hopefully that's helpful. But you know that the that really was kind of the the framework for how this proposal got put together. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so this though uh, is is a very minor updated slide here. Uh, but to summarize, there is a new county department of aging services uh, that's kind of at the core of it. Uh, and then uh, the funding for that for that department. Um, uh, the department would be responsible for, for leading the administration of the millage proceeds, but then there are some other existing programs uh, that ser primarily serve residents age 60 and older, which already come to the county. Uh, and so that is where we're looking to move those programs because of that, that targeted uh, interest in serving older adults in the county to this new department. Um, and then uh, we're looking at a mixture of uh, being staffed by county employee, I'm sorry, Staffing would be county employees led by a director, uh, but that is just, a, I think we're, uh, it's like 15% of the total funds are allocated for that, that right now. And there's even some breakdowns there in terms of administrative overhead versus, you know, programming staff, which is another place where I think future decisions would be made. Um, the, this lot, the bullet point in the middle, responsible for county programs which primarily benefit residents age 60 and older, both direct programming and funding via contracts. That, that really uh, is kind of the, the purpose of the department here and what it's being built around. Um, I, I did spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, do we have a, an existing place inside of the county where this work would fit? Um, and I, I think we could. I think, you know, it, there's a possibility there to, to make it fit into some other place. I'll say the, the reason I did not uh, include that in my recommendation is first, this is a, a really big amount of money. Uh, I think to give you a sense of how much this is, uh, this is more than half of the budget of OCD. And OCD's budget has grown you know, pretty dramatically in, in recent years through additional federal funding. Um, similarly, it's more than half of the budget for the health department. Um, and so both of those things, you know, to me kind of reflect that you know, we could have one person doing this work, but there is that would be really out of whack with what we know internally to manage other funding sources and other service programs of a similar size. Health department staff is north of 100. Uh, OCD staff is around 50. Um, and I, I'm not saying that we need anything near that amount here, but just in terms of, you know, some some maybe some possible benchmarks inside of the county do, th do think that it would, it would be um, under-resourced on the planning side, and it would probably have some pretty big uh, consequences on, in the long term if we don't appropriately make sure that we've got a structure here to, to do the work. Um, I'll just say, and I think probably many of you who worked with the county on ARPA stuff knows, like there's a lot that goes into administering these funds, right? Probably from the, the recipient side uh, in terms of complying with the county and certainly from the county side in terms of setting up all this structure. We're, we're interested in spending this stuff effectively and, and think, 
um, you know, just like we want it to be easy for the public to understand that the services that are being offered through here, that, that there's also that same uh, level of understanding and responsiveness from the, the organizational side. Um, and then do have the Commission on Aging here too. AAA1B has been great for the past couple of years. Um, want to call that out though, because a, a, tip, a more typical model for the county, uh, like the health department, uh, like mental health, like, like other departments, uh, is that we've got more of a formal connection uh, between the advisory body established by the Board of Commissioners and then the, 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 the staff component of the organization to do this work. And I think that it's pretty beneficial too, just in terms of having more ongoing discussions. Um, with you know the the work and uh, what what the county needs to know from your perspective and then what's happening from the implementation perspective. Um, all right. So so no differences here uh, on on this slide. I, I think that this has been talked about before. But um, what I'll what I'll point out here, we've got these three different parts of the the proposed department on aging. Uh, or Department of Aging Services, rather. Uh, and I've, I've tried to use color coding throughout this document um, because there's really three big uh, three big functions that this department would need to do. Uh, the green stuff, and you'll see this consistently, are, are places where the department would be responsible for, for funding other entities. Um, and, and so that would include this big RFP chunk of stuff. That would include the senior nutrition to some degree too, because right now the county does not actually deliver meals to people, right? But rather we, we administer funding that comes to us through AAA1B and through this proposal, which would be complemented by use of millage funds to then have, have service contracts with other, other entities who actually deliver the Meals on Wheels programs. Or, or similar programs. So that, that's all places where the money would pass through the county and then would fund outside services. So we've got the senior nutrition program there, um, the senior center financial support component. Uh, there's a legal aid uh, item as well. And then the big one would be the RFP pays process to fund projects or services. Um, I'll, I'll just say that this is a, a place again where these specific programs came out of all of that research that I've done previously around big needs and big opportunities. Um, you know, but but our subject for discussion. Yeah, I see a question. Yeah, um, you know, on the senior nutrition and the foster grandparents programs, if they move over to the whatever the office is of age, mm -hmm. office of age yeah, yeah, do funds come with them or or do do the funds stay where they yeah. are and we support them? Um, they they do come over. It's complicated, but I've got another slide on this. Uh, if you'll if I can maybe just put a pin in that and then come back to it. I think it's the two slides from here. I've, I've got a better breakdown. Um, okay. But but yes, there's uh, it's complicated. But I would say the big the big chunks of money would come with them to this new department as well as millage funds. Thank you. Yep. Um, but I, I think where I want to be cautious here, right, is the details of what a senior nutrition program would look like, right, and what are the goals that we're trying to achieve. I mean, a goal could be, um, and I, and this is where I, uh, my my experience is not the right experience to have this discussion, right. And I think why why the, from the county side would need more resources to appropriately engage with you all and help design this, but um, is to think about, you know, what are we trying to achieve through a senior nutrition program? Are we looking to increase the quality or the frequency of meals? Are we looking to increase the number of times uh, or, or transportation to congregate meal settings? Um, you know, the, the elimination of any wait list uh, is out there as well. And I believe um, right now there is no wait list. Uh, that's what I heard, I think, last month when I looked into it. But, but there's been some um, some recent supplemental funding provided by the county. And so what I don't know is if there's no wait list because of that funding or because there's no need for an ongoing wait list. Um, and, and so I, I think with all of these items, there are those specific sorts of program goals that will need to be established and is another place where I think the Commission on Aging can be very informative in terms of helping say, you know, what are what are the right goals for each of those programs, presuming that these are the right programs. I think, you know, it's possible that um, and there was, if you hear the, the end of the Board of Commissioners meeting, there were a whole lot of other programmatic ideas that were raised up by the Board of Commissioners. Those are not built in here, but again, there's there's probably a million different types of programs that this thing, this thing could support. And that, that's why we're trying to start with what are the programs and what do those programs need to look like, and then the, the best way to implement those programs. 
Um, senior center financial support, I'll just spend a minute on, on this one though. Um, there, the specific proposal would be a $200,000 a year uh, foundation allowance uh, with conditions to existing qualified and municipally affiliated senior centers operating inside of the county. Um, I've got 10 of them by my count, uh, and I can share that list with you if I want, but um, the, the, quali uh, the, the conditional uh, items around there would really be trying to make sure that there's um, an expansion of programming and an expansion of hours as, is, as it's proposed right here, and to make sure that for, for that use of millage funds, um, we're able to see more access to socialization and other services, which senior centers are really well suited to provide to the public um, and, and having it just be a little bit more specific than like building a new building or, or updating spaces, but really trying to make the link there between the investment uh, into greater access for the people who would be seeking those services. Um, the legal aid bullet uh, is, is in there and the idea and why it's in the green section is that we would not look to hire a county staff person to do that, but would rather seek those services uh, through an RFP process. We've got a similar model with some other places where the county uh, supports legal assistance that's available to county residents. But the thinking there would be that there are specific legal matters that are um, maybe not unique, but are more likely for, for individuals 60 and older and their families. And that this would be a, a resource to help uh, people seeking that sort of service or, or information navigate those legal processes. Um, and I'm going to stop there because I'm I'm really ill prepared to talk about that other than just knowing, you know, that, that it's a need that, that could be addressed and we've got some good models that are out there. But I, I guess it's my understanding from my prior talk with Marie as well as some others that there's other groups that, that do this specifically that would be interested uh, and able to respond to a county RFP if we put that out there. Um, and then the, the really big one is this RFP based process to fund projects or services. Uh, that is a $3.6 million item in there. And and so the thinking there um, is that uh, the, the county um, would design a request or a request for proposal process. And, uh, you know, again, many, many of you are affiliated with organizations who responded to this before. And, and you all, I think, as the Commission on Aging saw some of the, the board's funding of senior services last year, but could use that as a process uh, to allocate funding to support like big transformative systemic matters inside of the county. Uh, housing has been an idea that's been lifted up, you know, and if you're talking $3.6 million for multiple years or a fraction of that for multiple years, you could really make big sustained investment in housing or transportation or home health care. Um, and, and I think that's, there's a few slides in here later on in terms of what that process could look like, but that's been built off of other, other places where we have done this. And, and thinking that through that model, you know, you're able to get creative solutions that could allow for collaboration or could allow for you know, new innovative approaches to doing this work that maybe you know, we wouldn't get as the county just by thinking through this stuff on our own. And you, you could also pair it then you know, with, with some sort of stable funding source for multiple years. But none of that, you know, none of the specifics of like a million dollars for 10 years or eight years or, you know, $3.6 million one time, there's, there still would be a lot, a lot that'd be needed to be done to, to finalize and, and to develop that process, you know, and to also identify what would be the targets of, of what that RFP could fund. So that, that's kind of the, the money, the money facilitation part of the department proposal. Um, the orange section uh, is administration of the department. Um, and this is, I mean, it, it is a thing that we need for all of our county services. I, I think where I would maybe disagree from some of the comments earlier is that we have the existing capacity inside of the county to administer $11.5 million of new funding. Um, you know, we, we hear pretty frequently about, you know, some of the the, the challenges with, with doing things like we did with ARPA or, or doing other, other new funding sources. And again, would want to see us able to uh, move with some deliberate haste, you know, given that the, we would have this, this money as soon as January to start spending. Um, but, but so those tasks that are on there would include planning and communication. Um, administrative tasks include hiring personnel, doing stuff that's um, pretty routine, like work plans and, and scheduling around vacations and being able to answer phone calls and paying invoices and uh, some of that other stuff. It is really a pretty small part of the budget. And again, I've got some new slides here that um, will clarify that, that, that weren't in part of my Board of Commissioners presentation, um, but also seeing the Commission on Aging staff support there as, as part of that. 
Um, and then the blue section are programs directly operated by the department. Um, and so I would say this, you know, all of the stuff in blue here are, are probably things that uh, could be done by other entities than the county. And so I think, you know, there's, uh, if, if there's the discussion there about duplication of services, I would say that all these things are not, not just fair game for further review, but really need to undergo further review before those sorts of decisions are, are sorted out. Um, I, I do think there's a good case. I mean, maybe it's not the definitive case, but there's, there's a good case for keeping those programs inside of the county. Uh, and so that's reflected here. But again, none of those decisions have been made yet. And you know, we'll, we'll be from administration continuing to advocate for more analysis of all that stuff as we move along through this process. Um, but those would include senior minor home repair. Um, and that's, you know, that the, the thinking there is that uh, people want to age in place, right? And there are things that the county can do to help make that better for them. Uh, we do some of that right now. Uh, again, the OCD program was referenced. Um, the, a lot of the metrics and the service levels for that OCD program were used in the development of the budget here. So again, I feel like they're pretty good, but there's, you know, some things it, it's not that $16,000 level, I, I think that was referenced in another study. So, so there's probably some more fine tuning that would need to be done there in terms of the types of home improvements, any sort of, um, you know, cost limits, any sort of, uh, you know, um, other funding sources that could be complementary to millage funds that, that could be leveraged uh, through the use of this. A, a lot, I think, would be needed to to fully, fully build that out, but feel like the, that's one place where the county um, has done well with the direct delivery of that um, previously. And so I think there's a good case to be made for, for keeping that as a county service. Uh, just, you know, the, to the, the duplication with other county programs, I think that's another place where there's a lot to be talked about. And again, you get into some of the details around, you know, what's, what's the value of having something that's specialized versus the value of having something that's consolidated. And, you know, I, I think there's good arguments on, on both sides for, for those different approaches. Um, the, the resource hub, though, would be the call center, and there is a, a specific federal designation uh, that is the basis for what the resource hub would do. Um, it is, there are four, four positions that are attached to the resource hub. To the comment earlier that I heard about just one person being needed to do that, um, I think we we probably feel uncomfortable with that in terms of you know the the actual amount of hours that one person is able to answer a phone call. Um, we've got other other phone lines right now um, where you know e even to be able to deliver uh, forty hour uh, call center uptime requires at least two people. You know when you start accounting for vacations and lunch breaks and some of the other things that are required of employees anywhere, not just at the county. You know and and so feeling like. Um, High, high availability and high access is something that, that we've heard pretty frequently with the other sorts of resource lines that we've set up. Um, and that, that's, you know, even before you, you start talking about all of the, the back end work beyond just talking with someone on the phone or answering an email or, or being able to set up a website. So, um, but, you know, again, that, that's one that, that doesn't necessarily need to be operated by the county. It, it's a county model right now um, because I think, and you'll probably pick up on a lot of this, but, you know, this is a, this is designed as a central hub at the county to be able to both understand the services that the county is funding and then to, to connect people seeking services to those services. And so feeling like having that integrated resource hub uh, that both has the knowledge about the work uh, as well as the ability to connect people to the work is, is something that would be uh, beneficial. Because it you know, can also help shape, you know, shape the work of the department in terms of understanding gaps or, or where places where things need to be updated. Um, Two programs on here have asterisks, uh, both the Senior Nutrition Program and the Foster Grandparents Program. Um, I think I already spoke on the Senior Nutrition Program, but Foster Grandparents uh, is, a, is another program operated by the Office of Community and Economic Development. Um, that program, uh, you've got multiple uh, beneficiaries of it. it. It's a program that, that takes uh, you know, older, older folks and places them into schools as tutors. Um, and so, you know, you've got the, the kids who are the participants there that are also beneficiaries. Um, right now, those are very closely organized uh, in OCD, but because, again, they, they both really focus on adults age 60 and older as a primary focus of their, their service group, the recommendation would be to have them come into this new department. Any questions before I proceed? No? All right. No. Uh, so this is the org chart, um, and it is 
it reflects the proposal that you've seen, I'll say, but it's not yet been adopted. Um, one of the, the reasons we've done the org chart is to try and act, put actual numbers to all of this stuff and, and to give a sense to the board, you know, of that $11.5 million, what, what would it take to do all of this different stuff? Um, this does, there are, there are service levels behind all of these things, again, in terms of, you know, the number of houses that could be served, or not houses, but the number of residents that could be served um, through the, the home repair program or the number of calls that we would expect to take. So I feel like there's they're they're defensible, maybe are, are not perfect in, in terms of the staffing level levels, but have not tried to just arrive at anything um, out of the blue or or do anything that wouldn't absolutely be necessary to the work of the department. Um, but from the top though, we've got the board of commissioners, as you've heard me say a couple of times, they're going to be uh, ultimately accountable for deciding the use of funds here. Uh, they all appoint you. Um, and you all advise them. And so we want to continue to reflect that, that role and, and the expectation that they would be ongoing. Uh, the boards got, uh, they hired the county administrator to operate the day-to-day -day work of the organization. That's, that's my boss, that's Greg Dill. Um, but so this, as other county departments would report to the county administrator regarding the day-to-day -day work. Um, and then from there, we would see the that, that group supporting the Commission on Aging but then that director also being responsible for these uh, these different parts of the organization. Again, you'll see in the green columns here, the places where it's primarily administering money and moving money through the county to other organizations. Um, there that's separated into the senior nutrition program and then more of a, an open-ended grants office. Those are, are broken out right now because uh, we do have existing senior nutrition staff who are working on that. Um, and would expect, you know, based on the, the current work levels and working relationship that we would look to, uh, at least in the short term, sustain that, you know, sustain that organization in terms of, you know, who's doing that work and how it's working, but would be able to complement that with millage funds. My budget slide is the next one, so I'll be able to answer your question uh, there, Margie. Um, the grants and contract uh, uh, column, which is the, the second from the left here, would be responsible for those other funding processes that you heard me talk about, the RFP process, the legal re the legal resources process, um, any any other place, oh, the, the Senior Center Foundational Allowances, but would look at that as the place where that's responsible for both setting up the funding structures and administering those funding structures over the long time. Um, we do have some other, other similar uh, work inside of the county that, that does similar things with regards to programs and, and contract management. Um, again, the just to be candid, you know, my, my justification in, in saying that we would need more resources to do that here would be the level of resources as well as the specialization with the sector that I think would be uh, would be justifying the, the need for the new positions. But you know, again, that's a I think a place where more more scrutiny will be expected. Uh, moving to the right side, then, are the programs that are expected to be operated by the department. Uh, and just say it one more time to address the duplication stuff, but I think these are these are things that this proposal has been run through the, the department, could be could be run by other entities, and could even be you know programs that don't get funded whatsoever. You know, I think all of all of that stuff is uh, future, uh, up for future decisions. But we have a, a program manager overseeing this this part of the office. Um, that program manager, along with the grant officer and then the director, would be seen as kind of the departmental leadership. Um, but that program would uh, program manager would directly report the foster grandparents. Again, those are existing. Uh, it's an existing structure that we've got inside of the county that would look to move to this new department, and then would be establishing new two county two new county programs here. Excuse me. Um, that minor home repair uh, program that would include a supervisor to oversee the work as well as three coordinators. Uh, that, that whole model is actually based upon what we do in weatherization. And so have, have been saying that we need three coordinators to do that work, um, have really tried to dig in with the weatherization staff to understand, you know, the pre-work that's done in terms of identifying needs, the work to solicit contractors to do the work, the work to ensure that the work is done to a quality standard, um, and that we're, you know, we're not leaving any shoddy work uh, in people's houses when we're done, as well as the reporting. Um, and so there's, there, we've got numbers in terms of how many, how many of those coordinators or how many uh, houses and people those coordinators are typically able to help on a monthly and annual basis, which was the model here. It, it does presume five thousand bucks a house, and I think. 
Um, I'll have to dig up how many how many houses per year, but it would be you know a, I think it was 200, 200 houses per year at, at five thousand dollars a house, which you know may or may not be enough. Um, and then finally, the resource hub. There we've got a supervisor with three specialists. The three specialist number came up in order to ensure that we would have at least uh, two employees available for 40 hours per week during business hours when accounting for vacations and time off and training and, and all that other stuff that goes into this, as well as a supervisor to, to make sure that we're, you know, handle some of the more complicated cases that may come up uh, and, and make sure that that function's working well. Uh, and then the last part here is the, the administration items. Uh, in addition to the director of aging services, uh, we'd look to have a communications position to help um, the public, you all and others understand what's going on, uh, as well as a management analyst position. That's uh, a typical uh, position for the county that does a lot of business and back office work. Um, but so that that's the org chart. Uh, any any questions there? Budget's the next slide, Bill. All right, I will proceed then. Marta, I have, um, Marta has a question oh, yeah, or a comment. Yeah. Um, if you could go back to that previous- I'd be happy to. Um, I think the next iteration I'd like to see on this slide is identifying whether all of these are positions that currently are being um, occupied within the county and where, how many of them are full-time versus part-time. Um, I don't, I don't, it's not, I know you know that information, but it's not clear from this organization chart. So for example, if you're going to move senior nutrition over from OC, yeah. wherever else it is, are those existing positions that you're moving or are those new positions? You know, that kind of information needs sure. to be iteration of this chart. Oh yeah, uh, that's a great note. Thank you, Marta. Um, the, the, the short answer would be that, um, yes, the, the senior nutrition uh, programs, those are not the exact, um, the exact way that those are organized, but those do reflect the number of county employees doing that work, both on the senior nutrition uh, program, as well as the, the two foster grandparent programs, with the exception of the program manager. So, so those four are reflect work being done by current county employees. Um, then the other positions would be new employees, but I, I can certainly make that modification in future versions of this. Thank you. Yeah. Brenda? Yes, Andrew, um, to a Marta's question, would they also, if you move those senior nutrition programs and foster grandparent programs over, will they still be paid by the county or the millage? Yeah. Uh, well, so um, if, if they got paid by the millage, uh, but we're county employees, it'd be both. Um, so I mean, we have we have county well we have millage funds elsewhere that pay for county employees. Um, I've, I've got some more information there on the next slide, Brenda, and I, I don't have like the specific percentage of, of how much that would come for, but do have some program level budgets. Um, but haven't gone into that level of detail with you know say the senior nutrition lead if if fifty percent is from existing sources and fifty percent is from the millage. But I think that that'd be future future work that's needed with the more specific program budgets. Well, I think Marta, is that sort of the same type of question you had? I think you raised another point that I, I was sort of leading towards, but didn't get around to organizing myself like you did. But if a program, if an existing employee has moved from another place, I would assume that the funding that's attached to them comes with them. But that should be made clear that we're not using millage funds to save the county money on programs that they're already paying people to do. That if you know we if we move something like the senior nutrition lead, for example, over from another department, whatever is paying for them should come with them, and not. Yeah, I, I think that gets to Margie's question from earlier. I've got that on my next slide. Um, I think maybe where I'm uh, thinking in my my budget speak, maybe a little bit more in the weeds with this stuff. But yeah, that that is part of the presumption of of how this is built, Marta. So I think we're in agreement with that. Clear. That's so, my, that was my question too, Andrew. The same question Marta had. Yeah, because we don't want to use millage money to save the county money in other ways. That's not the point of the millage. The point of the millage is to supplement what's already out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you both. Let's uh, move on to the budget then, Andrew. Oh uh, yeah. Well. Uh, so this this first slide has been seen before. The next slide has more of the detail, but this. This is a program-based budgeting, and so I've tried to call out 
um, of all those different boxes and all of those different programs that you've heard me describe, both uh, what would be funded by the millage, as well as the FTE that would be funded by the millage, um, what would be funded by the grants and the FTE that are funded by the grants, and then, then the total. So you'll see those in the columns going across there, and then the lines going down represent the different programs that I've spoken to. And so I think um, some of what Marta and Margie and Brenda had asked about is reflected here. But if we're if we're talking about um, the in the grants column, uh, which is the you know the the middle middle right middle one here, uh, you'll see that there's a um, an amount in there of 1.163 million dollars for senior nutrition and 2.4 FTE. Uh, that represents the current uh, budget amounts and FTE amounts that are associated with that program. And so that is what is ex expected to be sustained as a funding level and staffing level, but move from its existing location to the new department. And so I, um, I would say, again, just to the concern there, again, the assumption is that that funding and staffing level would be sustained, but it would move to a different part of the organization because of its focus on supporting uh, residents age 60 and older. So what... Okay. Yeah, please. Is it, I think. So what yeah. you're saying, give me a breakdown. So what you're saying, for example, the foster grandparent, mm -hmm. the one point two point one three seven five four. that's what's in the program now, right? Um, can you repeat that number, Brenda? Is that the millage budget? Two million one hundred. I'm trying to read it. The small print here. Two million one hundred thirty. Seven thousand dollars. That's what's in the program now. Well, I that's um the here uh, I can walk through a line. Maybe that'd be helpful. Yeah, um, do that. Yeah. Do that. So that uh, if we're in the where it says programs and it's slightly bolded there, uh, you'll see right. programs and then uh, working to the right it says uh, two two point one million dollars. That is the right. sum of all of the the program dollars expected to be spent. By the out of the millage fund on this program. Oh. Okay. Oops. Okay. Oh, That's nice. Um, and so then there that would also then fund 8.8 .8 FTE. Um, of that 2.1 million dollars, 142,000 uh, would go to support the foster grandparents program. Uh, 1.47 okay. million would go to support senior minor home repair, and then 521,000 would go to support the senior resource hub. Of those 8.8 mm -hmm. .8 FTE. Uh, 4.4 uh, would be uh, in the senior minor home repair program, and then 4.4 would be in the senior resource hub. So the okay. next uh, set of columns then, where it says grant budget and then grant sum of FTE, that reflects mm -hmm. existing resources which are already coming to the county, and again, which would be sustained, so that, mm -hmm. that you get hundred and almost $190,000 in grant funds to support the foster grandparent program. Uh, so that, mm -hmm. that grant funding uh, would be allocated under this proposal to the Department of Aging Services, as well as the 1.7 FTE that are currently currently working on that program. So if you go to the rightmost column, then the total budget uh, for the foster grandparents program would be $331,000. And that's the combination of the millage funding source and mm -hmm. the existing grant funding source. And then the total FTE working on it would be 1.7. And that's the sum of the, the millage funded FTE and the grant funded FTE. Okay. Does that help? Okay. Yes, a lot. Okay. Thank you. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> so. Some questions, Marta, then Elizabeth. Um, I would like to see another column on this, on this uh, table. And that column would be what kind of skin does the county have in the, in the game in addition to grant funding and millage funding? In other words, the county has general funds and they should be spending some county money outside of grant funding and outside of millage funding on some of this. Um, and I don't really care where in the in the chart that appears in terms of what category, but I would like to see a column label, county general funds. Yeah. Um, well, so Marta, I think the, the reason that's not on here, and, and this was part of my research in developing this proposal, um, and we all this stuff is available and we'd be happy to provide it. But of the existing county programs, and this is ARPA, you know, some of the, the stuff that got done over the past few years with ARPA funding specifically, um, there's, there's not any dedicated program that solely serves uh, the 60 and older population. There are certainly parts of many county programs which support that part, but not, not really as a priority population. 
And there's not any dedicated general fund dollars that go to support that. So uh, I, I would say, you know, if, if the if the appeal is for the board to put more general funds into that, um, you know, that's I think probably within the purview of this group to make that appeal to the board. But but it, this is accurate in terms of reflecting that there's not any general fund support going to those programs currently. I understand that, but I'm saying that I think the county, if they're serious about providing services for older adults, should put some, and I'm not saying a huge amount, but some general funds into it. Um, and um, I think it's a responsibility of the county uh, to do that. And so I am very suspicious of any proposal for funding this program uh, that does not include any general funds. I just find that really hard to understand how the county can justify that. Understood. Elizabeth? I apologize for hopping on late. I'm in Toronto and it took half an hour work with the hotel folks to get me onto Wi-Fi. So I may be repeating some remarks that happened before I left on. So I'll apologize in advance. Um, had several comments about the Senior Resource Hub. Um, you mentioned that it's important to uh, have ways that people understand the programs the county is funding, which is unquestionably true. But this is just a small number of the kinds of things seniors reach out to. So I would encourage you, the county pursuing uh, what you had mentioned before, the possibility of making that um, offered through uh, external entities who already offer that because they may indeed be able to expand staff, but it won't require all that learning about other resources that exist and other kinds of services. Secondly, uh, for communications and planning, I don't know how those are envisioned, but one of the things that has come up consistently in the past uh, years of discussion is that there are federal resources that could be accessed that we have not leveraged yet because we don't have the source of funding. So I would hope that um, that be considered a part of perhaps both of those positions, or it may be one consolidated position that includes specifically trying to access other funding and also working with existing planning processes, for example, the AARP, uh, planning process. So that that's a thought about why I think those duties would be important. Um, another thing is uh, I was on a subcommittee three years ago now that looked at other counties that had millages um, similar. At that time, Kalamazoo was just starting a millage. It's had a couple of years experience. And Kent County has had a lot of experience. If you have not had the chance to reach out to those two counties, because they're kind of similarly situated in, in terms of demographics, um, I would encourage you and your staff to reach out to them, especially since Kalamazoo went through the process of having a millage and then having to plan, okay, now we've got this money, what do we do with it? Um, you had mentioned something about the money starting flowing as early as January, which I don't think that would be January this year. Would it, it, be? it would be this forthcoming January. Yeah. Um, okay. So just, yeah, just to respond, I have, have spoken um, and probably not uh, we're, worth more discussion, certainly a lot to be learned, uh, spending more time, but I uh, have spoken um, and reviewed documentation, both from Kent and Kalamazoo, as well as a broader survey of, of other, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the organization of other county, um, I, well, I should say the, the administration of other county uh, senior or older adult service millages, you know, and so I've, I've tried to build this in here. Um, in terms of the, the the collection date, yes, that if if the voters uh, following the, the count of the ballots next week 
um, approve the millage, it would be on December tax bills, and then funds would start coming in as soon as January of 2025. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for the questions. Anyone else? I have my hands up, Marie, I think. Uh, you actually took your hand down, but go ahead, Brenda. Okay. Yes. Andrew, um, this is an example. Uh, and you talk about transparency. Okay, right now we see dollar amounts. But what I think would be good for the public and for th this commission and anyone else who's interested in the senior millage, if you had a breakdown, for example, foster grandparent, where's a certain, the funding coming from? Like, for example, $100 from the state, $200 from the county, these are examples, and $100 from the senior millage. A breakdown like that would be very helpful. Is that possible to add another column to do that? Yeah, I, well, I, again, I think this maybe goes to Marta's comment as well in terms of why is there's no general fund column on here? And it's because there's there's no general fund contribution. Um, so Brenda, I would say, you know, your, your comments about the, the state funding or other sources would be, included in in this table in the grant budget and we we've got more detail on that and can can point that out there but but really did try and capture you know what are the existing funding sources and and showing that those are expected to be sustained at their funding levels and then how how the millage could be used to supplement those existing funding sources um you know i think one of elizabeth's comments around the ability to pursue other grant opportunities um Agreed. You know, I think there's a lot to be done there. That that is a common expectation of county departments. You know, is that they're going to be the best suited uh, to pursue those other grant opportunities, um, and because they know the stuff, they're able to to write that, and so would see that or would expect from county administration for that to be built into some of the administrative responsibilities uh, of of that part of the staffing structure. But so okay, I, I guess, get... yeah, um, Brenda, I'm I'm sorry for interrupting. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say I've tried to capture your question. Uh, maybe can get to it in a little bit more detail, but but really that that was my intent at at this slide that you're looking at. But I, I guess I realize it's maybe helpful to have some more explanation to complement it, or or maybe some more detail available here. But so that we can see a breakdown where all the funding is coming from for these programs. Yeah, and and I mean right now there are there are two grants. Uh, we get one grant uh, for foster grandparents. And then we get one grant, and it might be more than one, you know, but the, the only two grant funded programs that we have right now are for foster grandparents and senior nutrition would be the short okay. of it. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to my next slide here because this, uh, this has a similar look, um, but to the, the staffing question, and this is a, a new slide. And I'll, I'll just anticipate maybe some of the same questions around what are you looking at here, um, as we heard on the last one. Um, but general comment, both from the Board of Commissioners, as well as some, some made earlier here today in terms of the, the staffing levels. Um, so what I've, what I've tried to do here is to break it down in terms of, you know, of, of this proposal, how much money is going to staffing, how much is going to operations, uh, and then how much is going to administration by these different groups. Um, so if you, uh, hold on, I'll see, I'll, I'll try and do what Marie was doing with the annotation here. Um, hopefully that'll be... Oh, um, I don't, this might not be all that helpful because I'm uh, not very good at it. But uh, so this the staffing section uh, down down at the bottom here, um, what what this represents is of the of the total millage, uh, and that grand total is uh, eleven point four million. Um, one point five million dollars is proposed for staffing. Uh, that is thirteen point four three percent of the millage. Um, mm -hmm. Of, of that $1.5 million, uh, 390,000 goes into those three different administrative positions or 3.41% of the, the millage funds. Uh, mm -hmm. $246,000 or 2.16% goes into the, the money administration stuff. Uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, the bulk of the staffing really goes into that programming group, um, almost $900,000 or 7.85%. And as you've heard me talk about before, I think, you know, there's lots of future decisions to be made in terms of how those exact programs are to be implemented. Um, I, the, the reason I, I point this out is I think, again, a lot of future decisions around 
where programs are implemented, if they're county programs, if we're funding programs that exist elsewhere, but have really tried to have a pretty minimal um, administrative overhead necessary to, to do all of this work and just have that at you know just a little bit over 5% of, of the total millage funds there. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would point out here, if you look uh, up in the next section, uh, operations, um, which thank you, oh, even an arrow, Marie, that's great. But uh, um, yeah, so the, the total amount there is almost $8.9 million or almost 78% of the millage funds. Uh, and so I'd say I'm pretty, I mean, I think that's that's the right way to try and organize the budget and really focusing on, on the funding going into uh, direct service delivery. Um, so the department stuff, that's like commission on aging support, that's printing, cell phones, travel, you know, the, some of that back end stuff is a very small part of it, 36 almost $37,000 at 32%. Most of it, uh, most, 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 you know, uh, two thirds of the millage funding uh, was, is in this proposal is going into grants, you know, and that's, the, that again, that's money that would be coming through the county, um, but the $3.6 million RFP program, uh, and then another $3 million to support the other programs. I think $2 million was the, the figure that we had for senior nutrition, and then a million dollars for other programs. Um, and then mm -hmm. finally, $1.2 million, uh, another almost 11% going into support those programs specifically. And, I, and again, I think those funds, if you think about um, aging in place, those are funds that would be attached to the program, right? And, and so right now they're proposed to be spent within the county as those are designed in this proposal as county programs, uh, but could be you know, done in a, in a different manner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. So this, uh, this it was a slide I was thinking of, Margie, uh, when you asked your question. Um, I hope this answered your question somewhat. Okay, very good. All right. Yeah. Um, yes, thank you. Oh, oh good. Uh, happy to hear it. All right. Uh, so um, with that, uh, so that, that's kind of the end of the summary section of the slide. I, I will move very quickly through what else, what else is in here um, and would be happy to reference it, but I'd love more general questions and discussions, concerns. Um, so if if the millage approved, and that's the big conditional thing for, for us, right, is, you know, the outcome of what happens next week. I think from our part, we see the, the probably the next biggest step being some sort of board action. Um, the board would be required to establish budgets for this. They have not yet done that work. Um, so, you know, there's a lot that goes into the budget setting process that I think would need to happen before the board's ready to do that. Um, additionally, we would look for the board to approve or to authorize the creation of any of the positions that are on here. Um, the, the first one uh, that's part of this recommendation would be the director of aging services and to have uh, someone who is fully dedicated to this millage uh, would be recommended as, as the first such position to create. Not all of that stuff needs to happen immediately, um, you know, but I think we're, we're interested in, in moving with, with some haste uh, should the millage pass. Um, and then would also recommend, you know, board action on, in terms of setting the RFP priorities and getting that whole planning process moving. Um, subsequent steps uh, would be an actual hiring process. If this is, again, the proposal that's, that's utilized. Um, and then some of the early places we think where funding levels could be increased relatively quickly uh, would be both the senior nutrition program, again, because that's a program that's already in place. We've recently increased funding. Um, and so feel like we've got a pretty good model to move quickly there and don't need to, to recreate that or spend as much time with program development. Um, and then also the, the senior center funding contracts as well, given that, that the senior centers are already existent, we've done some of that work recently. And, and so think with that one, it's likely just getting the specifics around um, the, the contracts in place. Again, presuming that these are, these are the programs that, you know, that the board uh, signs off on. Um, and then, uh, so, Next steps, I, I won't spend too much time here because um, it somewhat mirrors what I talked about before, but um, the whole second half of this presentation really goes into more detail with each of those specific programs and have tried to anticipate some of the questions around like, what does the staffing do? What, is, what does it mean to be a senior resource hub? What are the specifics around the budget and the FTEs? Um, and so I would just uh, point that out as as a, like like this one for the foster grandparents program, have, have tried to provide a, a brief summary in terms of what the program 
what like when this when this document says foster grandparents, what is that defining, right? And what does it talk about in terms of the services that are being delivered, the the budgets, the funding sources, the people who are delivering these services? Um, I haven't gotten too much feedback on this section, but would you know if if there's a kind of an overarching question or something that that's missing here, would love feedback there too. And I've, I've really tried to um, give some sense of what the program could look like without you know getting ahead of all of the the actual work of um, building building you know uh, a real program from from start to finish but i think with that i'll i'll conclude my remarks marie um, and would love to hear some more general questions you can actually scoot forward to the rfp slide i'd be happy to yeah this is the first of two here So for anyone who watched his presentation last time, he didn't go through each of these slides, um, but there's a lot of really good information on them um, that you'll see on senior nutrition, legal aid, and then um, the RFP. I remember a lot of the comments that the um, board of commissioners had was, where's, where's transportation? Where's, you know, this program idea? And a lot of them do end up falling into this RFP um, project and they're, they're kind of listed out here. Um, mm -hmm. And then along with the RFP process, it's uh, recommended at the bottom of this slide that there be a committee that reviews those proposals before going to the board of commissioners. And Andrew, I don't know if you want to speak any more to that. Yeah, I'd be, I mean, it's a big one here. Uh, and so yeah. thank you for pointing this out, Marie. Um, yeah, so two slides on this, and I'll try and be quick here. But the, the first slide on this is just really tries to describe the purpose of, of what this program would look like. And as you heard me say, it would be a way to really do big systemic change or address like big, hairy, you know, hairy issues with the amount of resources that would be available through the millage. Um, I think the goals would need to be specific and defined. Typically, that's something that we look to do in the RFP process and that, you know, the goals for housing, for example, could be different than transportation, could be different than uh, healthcare or whatever the, the topic of the RFP would be. But that's where we would look to the committee to help define that, probably the Commission on Aging too. Um, the operating model talks about how the department would be responsible for managing this program. And as you've heard me talk about before, this, this is proposed to be staffed by county staff who would administer both the RFP process and the contracting process that would come from that. And then we've got the staffing and the, the budget estimates. So this one would take 1.2 FTE to run at a cost of about $185,000 with the bulk of the funding, $3.5 million annually would actually go to RFP awards. So um, this next slide though is a bit more specific in terms of how the RFP process for this amount of funding could work. And I will say that the basis for this has been other big community oriented funding rounds that the county has delivered. And so hope that there's lots of parallels between um, some of what the county did through ARPA, uh, what the county has done through the new human services partnership, uh, some of what's been done through other, other millage funding sources. Um, but so this first part uh, talking about a proposed process, uh, it, it talks about defining what the RFP should be for and what it should do. So, so what's the service area? What are going to be the goals? How do we want to define uh, the types of proposals that are being submitted? There's a lot that goes into that, you know, and, and if you're talking about housing, um, is your interest in housing doing uh, like building new senior oriented affordable housing, or is it about converting existing affordable housing? Do you, is there any sort of constraint there? But, but that would be part of the, the initial work in terms of developing what those focus areas are. Uh, with that, we do wanna go back to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, that's been helpful in the past in terms of assuring alignment with the funding of the county upfront before the board is asked to vote on the specific uses of it. Um, then looking to have the RFP language and process completed by staff. That's one, uh, depending on the complexity and the number of people involved can take can take some time and effort. Uh, I'll just acknowledge that up front, you know, for, for entities who are uh, pursuing RFP funded, know that that's not anything to sneeze at in, in terms of the amount of work that's required to, to go through that. But I think, you know, from the county perspective, it has been helpful at uh, being able to, uh, having having the board have options before them that, that really address the priorities that, that they're looking to support. Um, then, uh, then we would expect the committee to uh, review the responses and make recommendations back to the, the Board of Commissioners. 
but that the board of commissioners would actually be the final say in, in terms of authorizing the, the funding awards and would take the recommendations from the committee. Um, and then once we do that, then we get into more of the, the operating uh, process at that point in terms of executing contracts, administering funds, um, <clears throat> excuse me, being able to report back. So I, I do um, have, have this list of possible services and programs here. These were pulled from the various reports of this group, uh, the Community Foundation, other, other recent uh, strategic and needs assessment reports. I would not say are exhaustive, but I, I mentioned them as, as things which repeatedly jumped out in, in terms of areas to address. So health and wellness, transportation, capital projects, um, certainly not, not exhaustive though. And I think you know, more discussion could be possible there. And then you know, for the committee proposal, you know, this this is a proposal. Typically, we try to have broad representation, right, and have some commissioners who can speak to their point of view, have some people on staff who can speak to that point of view, uh, and then have, have community members as well who can, you know, who can speak to things that are not, you know, internal to the county, but rather be representative of what the public needs. Um, but we, yeah, I'll say, you know, we do. Well, actually, that, I'll stop there. Was that what you were looking for, Marie? With that? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank certainly. you. Um, I have a couple of questions, broader questions, but anyone from the Commission on Aging want to raise their hand and ask anything that you're kind of thinking about? Elizabeth. Um, obviously, starting up um, the RFP process for awarding the majority of the money is uh, makes tremendous sense. Um, but hopefully the millage will continue to be approved over time. And I've heard different things from different counties about the exhaustion of going through an RFP process every year to some counties do longer term things. Has there been some thinking about uh, the length of the proposals and um, whether RFP process might at some point be converted to a grant process? Um, maybe the second part of your question is easier to answer. Uh, we use RFPs as a way of identifying who receives grants. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's one and the same. In terms of the, the time period um, of funding, from a county administration perspective, uh, we wouldn't want to do any sort of process which would exceed the millage term. Um, because that gets very risky and, we, you know, there wouldn't be the fun. Yeah, sure. But I think short of that, it would be uh, that, that that would be within the purview of this process to determine, right? And I think there's probably trade-offs there, you know, in, in terms of the stability, the costs of having to go through the process versus, you know, the, the outcomes that you get. So I, I think um, with we, we've got other models elsewhere that do one year service terms, but we've got we've got some others that do up to four years as well and, and perhaps even longer. So I think that could be a variable uh, in that process that's that's determined later. Marta, I think going along with that, um, you know, I think a multi year uh, process would be a good idea. However, it should be contingent upon meeting certain um, um, gateways or achievements. So, you know, if you accomplish X, Y, and Z, then you get another year um, rather than just automatically, um, in, you know, like giving them multi years. Uh, so, some of it should be uh, contingent upon performance. Um, I think it would be very helpful to me recognizing that this is totally a draft at this point and not been adopted by the county in any way, but I would love to have a copy of this so I could actually look at the presentation, um, you know, when I forget everything you told me, which will probably yeah. happy Happy to provide it. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll just say as a general comment, um, we do have performance metrics built into our contracts. Um, there are... I mean, candidly, it, it, it's there's a lot of effort that goes into defining those as well as, you know, um, challenges with when to execute those for non-performance. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I think just I, I would expect and, and hope you've heard from from me over the course of this presentation, a real interest in being effective and efficient with the outcomes. And, and so I think that's in agreement with what you're saying. 
Um, but how you shape that language, you know, how you how you do the risk versus the trade-offs, all of that stuff, I think, is really in the details and is, is well beyond what I've developed here. Um, in terms of the presentation, I'd be happy to share it. Um, Marie, I can send it to you or anyone else, you know, following this. And um, my, my contact information, information is in there, too, should there be additional needs of me after this meeting. Yes, I would like a copy of that as well. Yeah, Andrew, I'll have you send it to me and then I'll distribute it to the to the group and listserv. Okay. Yeah. Margie? Um, yeah, I just, um, I'm looking at the um, the people who would be reviewing these uh, grants. And um, I wonder if you'd be open to, um, I think nine is plenty. Um, I don't know. I would like to see someone from the community who may have expertise in a given area to be able to participate uh, in this review, maybe we just maybe we just have a couple of people from the community uh, uh, be involved in this as well. People who who review grants all the time, or people who have expertise in the area. I I think uh, maybe we could pull on them to participate. Yeah, certainly. I, I, I've gotten some other suggestions around uh, listing, you know, members from the philanthropic community uh, to this group as well. Um, I, I think, again, all, all of that's very possible and is common with how the county looks to assemble groups to, to weigh in on these before they come to the board. Um, I, I'll just say, I think, you know, we look to the Commission on Aging to really be um, not solely the community voice, but to be representative of the community voice. Uh, and and so hope that that's reflected in the Commission on Aging membership participation on here. But you know we we do pull in other folks as needed too. Sure, uh, I I think they do represent the community, uh, indeed. But um, sometimes we can enhance um, uh, the review with someone with particular expertise. Mm -hmm. Hello, yeah. thank you. Um. Is it okay if I speak? Marie? Yeah, Marta. Mm -hmm. Although I think we need to recognize that anyone who serves on the review committee, uh, if they're representing an organization, that would immediately disqualify their organization from submitting a proposal. So we need to be cautious about who gets included and whether or not that would stop their organization from participating in the RFP process, because we don't want a conflict of interest. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so, Andrew, one question that I yeah. had, um, you mentioned that the funding could be available as early as January, which is way earlier than um, I've heard before, which is exciting. But I was wondering if you could clarify um, the timeline for like hiring leadership once you have that funding, um, when it could possibly get out <clears throat> to the community in the RFP process. What is that? timeline more realistically yeah, well, let me like. go back a couple slides um on this i can put some numbers and i might be able to even uh send you some additional notes here marie if it'd be okay. helpful to share later yeah um i, I do I, no, I don't want to get ahead of the board of commissioners right and that's where you know the next steps really do require board action um and and there's a lot of work that goes into developing what it is that we ask the board to approve um and and so i think that's you know, I, I don't know if, if you know, what it will take to get to a final version of, of a proposal that is ready for the board to consider if that's, you know, like a one month thing or if that's a, a one year thing. Um, I, I, I don't know that, but I think, you know, for our, our part, uh, we want to continue to, to work with all of you, work with the board, work with others who might have feedback here. And, and I think, you know, from our perspective, we tend to get the best outcome when, we, when we're able to, to bring something to the board that's been built in a collaborative manner, that's really been put through the ringer in terms of like, is this the right thing? Is this the wrong thing? Um, and so that's, that, that process does take some time, but I, you know, again, I don't know if that's a, how, how long that will take here. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with how far we are from it. And, and there's ways that this whole thing can get uh, chunked up as well. You know, if maybe there's some stuff that's less controversial, can do that in a, maybe a, a piecemeal approach and, and wait on the, the bigger stuff. But um, so the, the let me start with the tax collection timelines. Um, so county 
through the county treasurer uh, collects taxes that, that is done in partnership. Uh, well, you know, I know Brenda knows, but probably many of you like in partnership with the local governments of the county. Um, and so the next round of property tax bills um, with on which uh, this millage could occur, should it be a, passed by the, the voters of the county would be this December. That'd be the December 2025 winter tax bill. Um, if if the if the ballots next week show that this millage does pass, there would be some additional administ administrative action that the county would need to take to put this millage on those ballots. But but what would appear for those of you who live inside of the county and pay property taxes, you'd see a line on your property tax bill that says, um, you know, older adults millage uh, levied or able to be levied through uh, I think it's 2033. We got it on an earlier slide, but you know the end of that eight-year period for a, a 0.5 mil amount on whatever the property value is, and then the, the itemized amount. So that goes out as people start paying their winter tax bills. That that money gets paid to local uh, treasurers, and then comes back to the county through the county treasurer. Um, and and when it comes into the county treasurer, uh, the county treasurer is responsible for dispersing all of the different millage funds that are collected mm -hmm. to the receiving organizations. And this one, as a county millage, um, all of the funds that are collected through the older adults millage would come to the county and would be set aside in a separate fund. Um, but where the Board of Commissioners comes in is that before the funds can be spent, they would need to be able to establish a budget uh, for how those funds could be used. Um, and so again, there's nothing on the calendar right now. This, this proposal could be something that's brought to them, but I suspect will not look like this. Um, when it when it does go back to them, but that would be the next board action. An mm -hmm. additional thing that's required, uh, and this is per uh, county policy, is that anytime a new county position is established, the board needs to sign off on that. Um, mm -hmm. So this this recommendation talks about the first hire being the director responsible for the office. Um, that's I can go into at length in terms of why why that's the the recommended first position, but say say that is the first position to be created. Uh, we would need to write a job description. Uh, we would need to go through the whole internal county process of saying, you know, how does that fit with all of our other positions as a as a county role? And there's a whole standardized process for that. And then asking the board to approve and authorize that that be a new county position going forward. Um, that process, uh, there, there's no such job description drafted right now. There's lots of great resources out there that we can draw upon. Um, but I would say that uh, that's probably... Um, like a uh, one month uh, process, you know, to get that ready. And at that point, we're already into, you know, the holiday season and, and stuff at the county tends to slow down. So I, was, I would expect that that would not happen. And I'm looking for Commissioner Somerville here to raise her hand if I'm getting too far out of line, but um, would, it, would expect that probably the soonest any of that stuff would happen, given where we are this year, would be early in 2025 um, with, mm -hmm. with that sort of, uh, you know, kind of um, operational detail. Um, but so say say we were able to get some some sort of budget and some sort of position authorization, um, you know, hiring at the county, uh, it, it really depends on the role. We've had some other uh, leadership roles recently that have been have had their own set of community engagement around them in terms of the hiring panel and having like a representative hiring panel. I would expect that there'd be interest in, in having a, a similar sort of process for a director here where you've got, you know, uh, representatives of senior serving organizations, probably a representative of the Commission on Aging, some commissioner representatives, um, in terms of selecting that person to lead the, the work for the county. Um, those, you know, that those more involved processes tend to take a little bit longer, but in theory, I think, you know, it'd be possible to, uh, you know, do that on the, the fast side of things, maybe, you know, three, three months or so after authorization. And so at that point, we're probably looking late spring, um, you know, late spring in terms of being able to to get the office off the ground and running during which you know other other planning can continue to occur um with, with some of the the more specific details here you know but then i, I do think uh this ha have tried to lay out a, a comprehensive vision for the office but it could not all be implemented at once and would need to be gradually implemented and built up over time um and so you know that, that's where in, in part of this proposal is thinking about what can we do quickly you know, so that we're not sitting on funds that that have uh, services that that need support right now, while balancing how do you how do you build a structure to effectively uh, manage this stuff over the long term? Thank you, yeah. Elizabeth. 
Speaking of timelines, it's exciting to know were the millage to be approved, that funds could be collected as soon as the December tax bill. What is the the requirement for when those funds or funds collected in 2025 must be expended? There, there is none. Um, I mean, other than the expectations of the public, I would say, but there's there's nothing saying that you've got 10 years to spend it or, or so like that. Uh, um, so this, you know, the, the structure of it would be such that it's in a dedicated fund separate from all the other funds of the county. Um, there is some managerial practice in terms of establishing a fund balance and some other other things that, you know, how do you plan, you know, should it pass uh, eight years in the future, you would have a question about, you know, the voters choosing to renew it or not. You know, and so how do you plan for the eventual, just manage the risk around that not happening? Uh, but I would, I would say we've got ways in which, you know, we're, we're able to manage all of that stuff. But, but I think to the specifics of your question, um, you, you, you know, you don't have to worry about spending it inside of one year or 10 years or anything like that. Thank you. That was my yeah, question. You're welcome. Anyone else? I think I have my hands up, do I? Oh, okay. Was it uh, no, it's down, but go ahead, Brenda. Uh, Andrew, mm -hmm. um, have you or the county administration thought about, uh, you'll earn a lot of interest on that $7 million. So would that interest go toward um, administration or has there been any thought about that? Yeah, that, that interest stays in the fund. And so anything that is earned on the collections would be able to be spent for, for these same purposes. Oh, okay. So future year budgets, you know, it'd be bigger than $11.4 million. It'd be 11.4 plus, you know, whatever got earned. Yeah, you're going to make a lot of interest on that money. Right now, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, high interest rates. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, with I just um, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Annie. I just wanted to say thank you, Andrew. Um yeah. I think your timeline um about like how soon some of this stuff can move is accurate. Um I just want to say I, I know it's getting close to eleven. Um and I need to hop off, but I don't really have an update because this is kind of I guess the update that I would have had. Um but if folks want to follow up with me one on one, um regarding this and just like other feedback, I'm happy to have those conversations. Um, and hopefully we have good news on Tuesday night. You get better, Annie. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in along these lines, um, our subcommittees have been talking about how we can be really intentional partners going forward with administration on um, helping with some of these pieces that Andrew has been talking about. Um, the Moving Forward Subcommittee has drafted a, a resolution for us. Um, it is recommending that the COA forms a work group. Um, more specifically, actually, let me share my screen. Just this. Um, more specifically, that the Commission on Aging recommends that the Washtenaw County Board of Cre Commissioners create a post millage work group to take full advantage of the runway time leading up to 2025 establishment of the millage funding to advise and support the framework for the structure, services, RFP, research that will be required to administer the services supported by the older person's millage. Um, the advisory group would take full advantage of any runway time. Um, is further resolved, the role of this work group would be to provide the following support based on the Commission on Aging's experience in the social service, academic, and aging field, along with the Commission on Aging's representation. The work group will ensure that the voice and needs of the seniors 
uh, all across Washtenaw from rural to urban areas are taken into consideration and that seniors of all socioeconomic groups receive supportive services that will allow them to age in community. Um, Allison, are you still on? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm waiting to, I have an 11 o'clock with a- okay. Anything else member. you want to say on this yeah. before you have to jump off? Yep. So we had a lot of healthy discussion on this. Uh, Andrew, we really appreciated all of the extra content. That's really helpful for us. And I think it's very evident that we're going to be brought along in this process, but we really want to make sure the voice is heard of the community. I think a lot of people on this Council on Aging have a lot of experience in the sector of older adult services, um, transportation, senior nutrition. So a lot of us come with some of that skill set. So we're hoping we can be helpful to you, the administration, and to the commissioners. And so that's the reason we thought it would be helpful to have a work group to assist with this because we know it's moving along pretty quickly. Margie, do you have anything? Because you were, you know, part of that session. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to to approve the um, resolution. I'll second. Elizabeth Thompson. Thank you, Brenda and Elizabeth. Any additional discussion? Then Stephanie, if we could have a roll call vote. Yep. Um, Julia Ballard. Oh. Are we missing her? I think. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I'm not seeing her. Okay. Marta Larson. Nope. Marta. Yes. Okay. Marie Gress. Marie, sorry, are you not hearing me? Yes. No, I can hear you. Sometimes oh. it doesn't pick up when I just do one word. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. I'm not seeing her, I think. Okay. And uh, Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper, also not seeing her. And Allison Foreman? Yes. And then not seeing Annie. All right, I have to hop off. Thanks, everybody. I'll Thank follow you. up with you later, Marie. Okay. Did we have quorum, Stephanie? No, we don't have quorum. We, okay. uh, we have six and seven is quorum. Okay. So uh, we'll table it for the December meeting. But Andrew, please know that we are very excited about this. We're excited to work with you okay. on this. Um, and uh, thank you for everything you've done so far. If, if I may, it just um, yeah. I'm sorry for being so long winded with it. I, it tends to happen, but I, I'm, I'm grateful great. for the opportunity to be here. And, and I'll just say informally, would be happy to continue to work in the spirit of that resolution until you're able thank to get you. quorum. Um, you know, please reach out. I'll I'll send the stuff to Marie, and again, would uh, similarly really value the input of this group. Um, I, it's not, I want to facilitate this thing, but I don't want it to be like Andrew's plan or county administration's plan. I really want it to be, you know, the county's plan for implementing the simulation. So whatever I can do to help, you know, move that along uh, is my interest. So again, appreciate the time and look forward to working all, with all of you more. Yeah. And Andrew, I thank you for your patience and explaining <laughs> and going into detail. Thank I'm, you I'm so much. Thank you, Andrew. Stop. Elizabeth, did you have something? Just, I'm thinking, because we didn't have quorum today to, to pass the, this resolution, but I suspect we will pass it next. And uh, it might be appropriate to share with uh, folks that this will be on the agenda. And if people are interested in being on that work group, perhaps share that ahead of time with you. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep, I can do that. All right, then.
Um, I didn't have any new business. Annie didn't have any new business. Um, so we can adjourn. Um, we just need a thumbs up from everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, first of all, to everyone. Oh, yeah, that'll be later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Marie. Yeah.